In this clip, we're going to be talking about masking. Masking is the ability to remove something from a layer. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go to Composition, New Composition. I'm going to keep these settings, and I'm going to hit OK. There's nothing in our composition yet. So I'm going to go to Layer, New, Solid, and I'm going to change the color to a light blue. And I'm going to hit OK. Now that we have a solid, I'm going to bring an image to my composition. I'm going to press S on my keyboard to scale it down. So if I only wanted to use this part of the building, I would have to use a mask. In order to create a mask, we would have to go to our pen tool. If we hover over our pen tool, you can see that our keyboard shortcut is the letter G. And once activated, our pen icon will activate on our viewer. I'm going to zoom in with my mouse wheel. And then I'm going to middle mouse and drag to one of the edges of my building. I'm, I'm going to select my layer and I'm, going to, and I'm simply going to start drawing a mask around my building. Here I'm middle mouse and dragging so I can move quickly on my viewer. And I can and I can zoom in and out with this with the scroll so I can make it even faster. Once I left click on the very first point where I started my mask. The mask will finish, and I'm, now I'm going to hit Alt, forward slash, to zoom out. And you can see that now only the building is visible. Now I did cut out part of this other building, just so we can keep the, that shape. Now that a mask is created, some new properties will appear on a layer. So I'm going to go and break down my layer, and you can see that we have our basic transform options. And we also have our mask options. Now, first of all, the mask has a few different options. For example, we're adding that portion of the mask that we selected, but we also can subtract that portion or that area from the layer. So in this case, I only subtracted the building from the layer. We also have, we also have a few different options, but these activate only once we create a second mask on our layer. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go back to my pen tool. Now I'm going to select my layer and create a rough mask. Now nothing happens, although we can see that the mask is here. And that is because both of the masks are set to add. I'm going to set the second mask to subtract. And now we are removing that part of the layer as well. Now I'm going to select my layer and, go and create one more mask. You can see that you can start playing with masks. Now right off the back, you can see that you can get a lot of multiple different results from just from playing with the masks. If I change this to intersect, you can see that the result is much more different now. Now right after that, we have the option to invert those masks on each one. always getting different results. Now that we have those masks, I'm going to go back to the first mask and I'm, and I'm going to open the properties. In here you can see we have a few different options. The mask path, if we left click on the shape option, we have a few bounding box options. You will probably never you will probably never play around with these options, but if you start to change them, and you hit OK, changes will be made to the mask, the way it interacts with the layer. I'm going to hit Control c to undo that, and I'm going to go to Shape one more time. And then here, we have also the option to reset the mask to a rectangle or an ellipse in case you want to start from scratch. I'm going to hit OK and now I have a rectangle. So this mask is a rectangle and it tries to maintain that bounding box. I'm going to hit Control c to undo that. 
After that, we have the mask feather. Right now, we are at zero pixels. But once we start to increase this, you can see that we start to get feathering around the mask. After that, we have a mask opacity. Now, this opacity is much different than the layer opacity itself. The mask opacity will only control that portion of the mask. If I go to my second mask, which is subtracting the part from our layer, and we can see the background color, I'm going to bring down the opacity. And although the opacity is going to zero, it means that the mask is no longer being active. So that doesn't necessarily mean that this, is, this opacity option works to make that area appear, but simply to make the mask interaction with the layer itself. Our fourth option is our mask expansion, which we can go higher or lower. And we can start shortening in. Now the, mat, the feather is at 74, so I'm going to bring this down to zero. So you can see what's actually happening. The mask expansion is at negative 122. So if I start expanding it up, so if I start bringing this value up, it will expand out. And so on. I'm going to hit alt forward slash to full view my viewer. Now a mask does not necessarily have to be applied to an external asset, like an image or a video. It can be applied to a simple layer, new solid. And I'm gonna make this a uh, slight white color and I'm gonna hit okay. Now a different way to create a mask is with our shape tools. Right next to our pen tool, we have our shape tool. If we left click and hold, you'll see that we have a few different options like a rectangle, the rounded rectangle, an elliptical, an, el an ellipse, polygon, and a star. So you can select all these. For now, I'm going to select an ellipse. And once I left click and drag, a mask will be created on that layer. And you can see that the shape will start changing and the mask will be created once I let go on the mouse. And now we have the same properties as before. However, I'm going to hit Control Z if I hold my shift while I left click and drag, you can see that I will maintain a perfect circle. And that will work the same for these other tools. I'm going to hit control C, shift, left mouse hold. You can see that now I made a perfect square. Okay, I'm going to hit control C to do undo that. Okay, so what else can we do with masks? Well, it's pretty simple. I can duplicate this layer. I'm gonna go to layer, solid settings, and I'm gonna change this to a black. Now I'm gonna hit okay, and I'm gonna hit new. I'm gonna select my layer, select my anchor point tool. I'm gonna make sure my snapping tool is on, and I'm gonna move my anchor point right to the center of my circle. Now I'm gonna press S on my keyboard, so I can scale this down. And I'm going to position it on the left side. I'm going to duplicate this layer. And I'm going to move this on the right side. I'm going to duplicate this layer one more time. I'm going to turn off my snapping tool. Press S on my keyboard. I'm going to scale this up, position it right there, hit M on my keyboard to open my mask. Now in this layer, I want to make another mask and pretty much another perfect circle. So what I can do is I can simply duplicate this mask by hitting control D on my keyboard. And now I have another mask, but this mask I'm going to set to subtract. Now the entire layer disappear. But another great option here is the ability to adjust our masks 
once they're created. And we can do that by just changing any of these anchor points. So what I want to do is I'm going to change this mask to intersect. And you can see now that now I only have this portion visible. When we create a mask, a tangent is created. And a tangent are these little handles that pretty much control the shape of our mask. You can see that there's some sort of bevel into it. We can also change the length of the mask if we wanted to make the mask a little sharper. Another thing that we can do is we can hold Control Alt and left click on that point and it will transform that point to, so it won't have no curvature. And I can adjust the other settings of my masks. I'm gonna do the same for this point. Control Alt and I'm gonna kill the curvature and I'm gonna expand the curvature of my second mask. I'm gonna hit Alt forward slash to zoom out. Control Shift H to hide my masks. And you can see that I made a small happy face just with masks. So I, now I can make a shirt for this guy or put some ears or some eyebrows or something. And then I can start animating them. One of the best options with masks, and not only with masks, but in After Effects itself, is the ability to keyframe the masks. In this case, if I, if I bring down my mask expansion and I bring it up, it will seem like the guy might be talking and we can use that just to animate a speech. Just with a few keyframes. I'm gonna set this I'm gonna set this to negative 103 and I'm gonna set a keyframe. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna to go to zero and I'm gonna set another keyframe. And now you can see that the keyframes and I'm gonna select these two keyframes and copy them. And now you can see that it seems like this character is talking. Like this character is talking and just with a few keyframes and a few masks. I hope this gave you an idea of how to use masks and the power behind them. Please hit that like button so I can continue to make more videos. I'll see you guys in the next clip.